Welcome back for day 17 of my six mark challenge for AQA GCSE Science. In the run up to the GCSE exams, Monday to Saturday, I'm posting a new video each day with a six mark question so you can practice how to answer them. You can find a link in the description below to all of this week's questions and also you can access all of the previous videos via the playlist. Today we're thinking about how to write a method for another one of the required practicals, but before you dive in, just a couple of reminders. Firstly, this is not an essay question. Your ideas need to be laid out in a logical fashion, but there are no marks in GCSE Science for writing in full sentences or paragraphs. In fact, your examiner is going to prefer it if you write your ideas clearly as bullet points, a numbered list or a table. And for a method question like this, I would definitely go for the numbered list. You might even choose to write a little plan before you start, and you can be given credit and marks for that plan, even if you run out of time and don't turn it into a full length answer. You also need to make sure for anything where you're writing a method that your method actually would produce a valid outcome. So read it back at the end and think to yourself, if I gave this to someone who had never done this investigation before, would they actually be able to answer the question? If you haven't done so already, give yourself six minutes now to answer this six mark question. Hopefully you found this quite straightforward as this is definitely one of the easiest required practicals to do. The first thing you would do in producing a paper chromatogram is to draw a pencil line at the bottom of your piece of chromatography paper. And the reason it's in pencil is so that it doesn't run and interfere with the inks that you're trying to analyze. Then you're going to put some small dots of each one of the inks that you know what it is on the start line, and then a small dot of the ink that you're actually trying to analyze. You're going to put your piece of chromatography paper into some solvent, usually just some water, and you're making sure that the solvent doesn't touch that start line. So you want the liquid to be drawn up through the paper by capillary action. You don't want your ink samples to actually go underneath the water, because again, if they did that, then they would run. Then you're going to leave this for a while to work while the solvent rises and the inks separate out. And then when the solvent reaches near the top of the paper, you take your chromatogram out and you allow it to dry. At that point, you want to compare the position of the little spots of colour that you're going to see. So you've got the sample and you've also got your known colours and you're looking to see are they the same as each other or not. You might choose to calculate an RF value and you might also choose to repeat this using a different solvent because, of course, these different colours have different solubilities in different solvents. So two things which reach the same height in water might reach different heights in ethanol and that could be useful information to have. As ever, we've got slightly more included in this model answer than you actually need in order to get six marks. So you may still have got six, even if you haven't said everything that we've said here. But there are a few things that are absolutely vital. So we need to have the dots of the known inks and the unknown ink on the same pencil start line. We need to have the chromatography paper being put in the solvent. You need to have described how you've left it for some time. You might have just said something like leave it for five minutes. And then we're going to need to talk about taking it out of the solvent before we can compare it. Although you could get away with skipping the part where you dry it because actually the inks aren't going to move anymore, even if you dry them. And then we need something about comparing. So you might have chosen to do that in terms of the RF values. You might have chosen to do that in terms of just looking at the positions of them. But there needs to be something in there about some kind of comparison. For tomorrow's question, we're back to physics, looking at the electromagnetism topic. Remember, you can find a link in the description below to all of the questions for this week's videos and also the playlist with all of the videos that we've done in previous days, which you might have missed. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again tomorrow for the final part of this week's six mark challenge. If you found this video useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE Science revision videos coming soon.